Hey guys, this is Trader Genius. My name is Rob and I'm joined by my brother, Jess. How you doing, man? What's up, brother? Grateful to be here. Hell yeah. And we got a special guest today, an OG around the Trader Genius community. Bruce, how you doing, brother, man? Oh, I'm great, Rob. Good to see you. Hell yeah. All right. It's good. Uh, it's good Monday morning. Let's get uh, let's get talking about some trading. Um, this guy's is our recap. Um, every two weeks within the Trader Genius Club, we do reset training uh, for our alumni, our, our, our senior members. Um, and we just get back to the basics. Mostly it has to do with our mindset. Hey, Bruce, you know, what's going on between your ears, right? Absolutely. Yes. Sometimes uh, we, we tend to stray and we get into these behavior patterns that aren't helpful for our bottom line as traders, nor our sustainability uh, moving forward. So uh, what Jess and I were, were planning on talking about today, guys, is is a little bit about feedback loops and that behavior and how those patterns form. We'll, we'll start there. Um, we're we're going to talk about the self-discovery of those habits, um, how to change the ones that are unhelpful and how to reinforce the ones that are, are good for your trading. Um, and then just, you know, really that, that all ties and supports to, to why we have a community, why we have uh, a guy like, like Bruce at our side, you know, shoulder to shoulder, we're, we're on this journey together, brother. Um, so let's, let's talk about loops there, Jess, you were just talking about that before, uh, we started, um, you talked about shortening the feedback loop in, in kind of a context of self-discovery. So like, what is a loop, uh, for the folks out there and how does that relate to your patterns of behavior in trading? So a loop is, uh, essentially a circle of behavior. So you're, you're doing something over and over in a repetitive manner over time that drives an outcome. Um, usually there's behaviors associated with that loop that kind of moves you along. There's decision-making, there's behaviors, there's consequences. And we just, we keep doing this all the time. Some of the loops that we get ourselves in are, are relatively short. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to get that trade. It, you know, it's going to go, I know it's going to go Bye. And then it turns around and it's like, uh, you know, the market is, is, is plotting against you as it automatically turns as soon as, you, as soon as you click buy. Well, there's that's a loop you got in this kind of dog brain where you just wanted to anticipate the trade. So you made a decision to act by selecting buy. And then the consequence of that behavior was the stock going in the opposite direction. Now, it isn't conspiring against you. That's just what happened to have happened. But we can get into these really short loops that we can identify. And then sometimes we get into these really long loops that the feedback is so long that we actually don't get to recognize that it is a product of decisions that we made a month ago, six months ago, five years ago, 10 years ago. And so really at the end of the day, when it comes to trading and improving, I found that the biggest help to me overall is being able to identify those loops, Rob, and being able to create some awareness around that. And uh, what's kind of been your experience uh, with, with loops in trading? Is there anything in particular that sticks out to you? Um, well, I guess at a high level, I'm not Superman. Uh, that's the realization I've made. I've, I think I'm in control of my behavior all the time. Uh, but that's not the case. And, you know, you can see feedback loops everywhere. And your, your dog, Bruce, you know, I got a Shih Tzu around the house now. Uh, and and I, I, see it, I see it with my girlfriend too. She'll hit that snooze alarm. And then she'll be riding like within a minute or so of being late to work. But that's, that's a decision she made way back when, right? And the same thing happens just, I guess the number one practical takeaway as far as loops and my trading is the, the essential aspects of the, of the trade log and the logging process, not just having a log, but using it to full effect, uh, to identify, not, not just, uh, hey, I entered at this price, I exited at that price, that's surface level stuff. And Bruce, you know, we, we talk about it all the time, about effective trade logging. You got to have that remark section, right? You got to look inside a little bit. If you're going to actually squeeze all the value out of the trade and learn all the lessons it has to teach you, you've got to have that journal aspect to your trade log. So Bruce, man, you were talking, um, we, we met on Thursday and you were talking about that first candle, right? It's like a bright, shiny thing. And sometimes you click that buy button and you didn't even like immediately after you click buy and you get filled, you're like, oh, what did I just do? 
Yes. And well, what I want to get back to is, is the logging. What happened a few weeks ago is I uh, stopped logging with some issues that were going on in, behind the scenes. And uh, I, uh, after a couple of weeks, I got stuck uh, and made some uh, mistakes that we learned out from day one uh, in the process, not, not to uh, get into these trades. And uh, uh, that all went out the window after a couple of weeks of not logging. And uh, I became very aware of it when I got together with you as a coach and brought me back on track. Um, and it was very obvious what was going on. And that was just taking the, the logging uh, and, and your dog brain kicks in as time goes on. You don't uh, realize that uh, you're regressing with your knowledge of what, what's happened or how, what you've learned. And um, um, it takes a coach to get you back on track. I couldn't do it by myself. I didn't even know what the problem was until I spoke to you. That, that's perfect. You, you just you just nailed on onto something that I just want to highlight real quick is it, the trade log to help us uh, understand our loops, to create some clarity and awareness around our loops, but then also being able to have that outside perspective of that coach, somebody else that's outside looking in going, hey, do you realize that this is going on or hey, do you see what your behaviors or your actions, the consequences of those are, because sometimes we're so in it, we're so in our own mess, in our own stuff, in our own struggles, that we're not able to pull back, you know, have a thousand foot view on our own behaviors, even though it's, there has been a change, like not logging. And then you're like, man, why, why am I not doing as well? And then you get with a coach that's like, hey, do you realize that you were doing this? You knew that you were doing it, but putting that two and two together or helping you to have the awareness to be able to put that two and two together. And uh, Rob, you you experience that a lot with uh, with talking with folks and, and that kind of um, perspective. How, how have you seen that um, kind of highlight uh, people's ability to improve over time? Yeah, I mean, the, the logging process is essential and, and we all have been through coaching before and we, we know what the right methodology for teasing out those are just from firsthand experience. And that's, that's where it has to be. Um, so I'd say that's the number one variable, Jess, man, is you have to live it yourself. You, you talked about needing interaction and, and something we got from our, our man, uh, one of the other OGs in, in the club. Um, you have to interact with it. You, it. It's your process and, and it's your trading business, as we often say. You have to be intimately familiar with why you're making the decisions you're making, their business decisions. And if you want them to pay you and, and be consistent with them, you have to be able to get in there and tap into what's actually driving them. But hey, there's, there's neglect. There's, uh, you know, there's, you fall into that pattern of comfort and everything's hunky dory, right, Bruce? Like, if you, you know, you ran businesses in the past, so there's, there's this uh, proclivity that we have as, as the boss to say, okay, well, this employee, this, this guy's a really hard worker. He does everything I ask him to. I never really have to supervise him. And then you pay less attention to that guy, right? Yes. And so what ends up happening? That, that person feels neglected. Well, the same thing happens with our streaks of gains in trading. If we're not paying attention when we're, when things are up and things are great, you know, we feel comfortable. We feel like we're on top of the world. Well, that's when that drift from good performance comes in and, and it can sideline you with, with one big loss. If you run into that buzzsaw um, because you got comfortable and you actually drifted from process. Um, so I'd say that's, that's the number one thing, Jess, man, is, is the consistency uh, that you get from that kind of trading uh, trade logging process. Um, and it's, it starts with mindset. You know, it's, it's the overconfidence in a streak of gains comes from thinking you're right rather than your system or your process is getting it right consistently. Um, so staying in the cock, Bruce, we talked about that um, on Thursday. Like if you show up and, you know, your baseline is to sit down, you know, it's early where you are, you're, you're on the West Coast. So mm -hmm. the market opens at 6.30 as a day trader like 
you were talking about that mindset and how it has shifted from, I need to trade. I have to find a trade today. Go, go, go to let me sit back and take it easy and let the trades come to me. So how has that transformation uh, been coming around and how do you plan to reinforce it going forward? Oh, that's been a tough one for me uh, to uh, get up in the morning and you had to make that trade. You had to make that money. You had to and, and get on with the day. And uh, when that, when you have that attitude going in, you're not relaxed. You're tense. You uh, are hunting for the trades and the success uh, becomes very limited when you approach the day like that. And it's taken me a long time to realize, to, to, to relax, to, to go with the process and to watch it unfold as, uh, uh, as the market uh, carries on. Um, uh, uh, but yeah, just to be aware of that and not to, not, not to jump in, that's the big thing. And it's, uh, it's been a, a very self-satisfying uh, situation to get to that point. You have control over what's going on and it's a, it's a, a, it's a good feeling. Yeah. Good. Staying in the cog, making deliberate decisions. That's right. That's right. That's, I right. Mean, That's after, right. After a certain number of repetitions uh, with chart pattern day trading, like we all practice, like, you know, what a good low risk trade looks like, you know, what the setup. Absolutely. Is. Absolutely. And, you know, we, we talked to our, our man, Stephen, like, Generally, the the only problem with such a process is we tend to hijack it, and we're the reason that it goes wrong, if if at all, uh, because of that impatience, because of that chasing um, and hunting for trades. Um, so I'm so glad to to hear that it's you know it's settling down for you. And uh, I, we got a student, uh, Jess. Uh, his name's Jeff, um, gentleman in Atlanta. Who hopefully he'll be joining us at these reset training uh, meetings soon. He, he was talking the other day, he's in, uh, he's about halfway through his simulator training. And he was talking about how the game is starting to slow down, i.e., you know, we're, we're, we're both, you know, have athletic backgrounds. Um, sometimes the, the baseball players, pro baseball players will say that they can start seeing the seams on those balls because the pitch actually slows down for them to hit. Um, so what is that? What is that kind of comfort? That's a different kind of comfort than we were talking about before. And have you ever discovered the game slowing down for you and your trading? Yeah, I, I think a lot of it when those moments happen for people is being able to put all your energy in to focus on what actually matters. I think when you first start trading, you're trying to absorb everything that's on the screen and everything that everybody's telling you. And it's just kind of like, ah, information overload. There's all this stuff coming at me. <laughs> You're trying to just kind of grasp at things and put them into play as best you can. Okay. That didn't work. Move on, move on. But once you get settled and you begin to become confident and really trust your process, you're able to push all the other noise out and really just focus on commanding your trading. And I think lots of times that, that hunting mentality, um, that dog brain mentality, especially when people are starting out, is that idea of I need to trade or I'm excited to trade, I want to interact with this. Mm -hmm. And sometimes when it comes to trading, it's more about commanding your trading process and sitting back and letting it come to you. So I know that I get in when certain rules are met and I get out when certain rules are met. And so instead of clicking around, click, 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 looking at 100 stocks or whatever it is, I say, OK, pre-market analysis. These are my handful or my one or maybe there's no stocks at that current point in that pre-market analysis. And this is what I'm going to focus on. And either it's going to come to me or it's not. You know, we, we've mentioned the, uh, the Hank Aaron quote, you know, he just waits for his pitch. He's going to sit back in the cockpit instead of being an aggressive fighter pilot. He's going to look at it more as, hey, I'm just going to be up here flying, doing circles, doing my thing. If something wants to come into my field of awareness, that is something that I can um, take advantage of and, and allow me to exercise my skills, then, hey, I'm game. But at the same time, I'm not going to be flying around looking in places I shouldn't be looking for to, to try and stir up trouble. Because then uh, 
you know, one of the thoughts is uh, there, it, it, it comes from a, a previous line of work, but it's the rock method. You know, it, you don't want to keep turning. If you turn over rocks, you're going to have to deal with what's underneath it. So if you're hunting for things, you may not like what you find. Uh, so just kind of let it come to you. Let the right stuff come out from underneath those rocks that, and then you deal with it. It is kind of a, a mentality with that. So being able to keep that focus and commanding that trading space. And what really kind of has allowed me to be able to command that trading space is the trade log and having a mentor. And the really the trade log, just to kind of drive that home, it's an opportunity for structured self-interaction. So you're saying, hey, these are the things that matter to me, A, B, C, D, whatever they are. And allowing you to have a consistent focus when you review your trades. No different than watching game film, no different than getting in the batter's box to be able to get to the point where you can see the seams of the ball. It allows you for that structured self-interaction so you're focusing on what matters and don't get distracted. And uh, Rob, what happens when we end up getting distracted from our process? <laughs> well, I'm more likely to get into a negative feedback loop, brother. The dog chasing its own tail. <laughs> Man, whether that's my big dog or my shih tzu there, Bruce, you know, like the dogs are, you know, they're a, a key uh, demonstration or an example of, of how we can get. We're not that much removed from them. And uh, that's that's probably the number one thing is is like it gets me back into loops when I'm trading distracted. Yes, man. Like uh, here, we'll just talk about some of those discoveries we've made, like what keeps us on track and what what derails us or distracts us from focus on our simple process. Because as you were talking about um, Hank Aaron, the home run king, you know, he was just he hit all those home runs because he waited for his pitch. He was an opportunistic hitter. And so he's very selective by, you know, by uh, extension. So that's, that's what we've all cultivated is that selectiveness and the opportunistic, but it doesn't mean we're, we're impervious to it. So one that Jess, you and I, and Bruce, we've talked about this, but right here, guys, uh, as a day trader and options day trader, if I get all jacked up on caffeine before I trade, you can kiss that day goodbye as far as sticking to my process because it makes me jumpy. It makes me honestly feel like Superman. And like, I can't get hurt. Like I'm the, I'm, like I'm the wisest trader there ever was, Bruce, man. So I get a little bit of this, uh, you know, crazy juice in me and I, I, I go, I go wild. I deviate from my process. This is a distraction in and of itself, Jess, man. Um, so what did I do? The, like I found out I was in a loop and it took me a while for this one. This one was kind of insidious because, you know, Caffeine is just one of those subtle, just behavioral patterns that a lot of us fall into, especially here in the U.S. or in Canada. Like caffeine is part of your wake up process. So once I started realizing that caffeine was jacking me up through my trade log, I actually took it and I made it a fun little incentive game for me. It's actually a little treat for my dog brain. So after only after I have followed my process and I've logged all my trades for the day then it's a little reward. It's a reward to have my coffee. And it's, it's actually become a ritual to move on to the rest of my day. Um, so by that simple act of discipline and delaying the gratification, I've been able to break that loop, Jess, man. Um, and I, we've talked about caffeine and, and, and coffee or, or other substances before. What other discoveries have, have you made, uh, positive or negative to, to your trading and how have you worked with them? I would say the kind of one of the big ones that really was highlighted by the trade log in addition to the caffeine was sleep. So less than six hours of sleep is, is a no trade day. It's a, that's, that's a hard and fast rule for me. Um, sure. Do some days, uh, do I get rewarded for bad behavior uh, when I was doing my trade log and figuring out about six, less than six hours of sleep being a no trade day? Yeah. It's not like every day that I get less than six hours of sleep, but it's not worth the risk. It's not worth it. It kind of, even though it, it it's kind of odd, but both caffeine and lack of sleep and, and not together, not necessarily together, but either one of those, uh, I get really sucked into the trading and uh, I, my, my clicker finger just goes on, goes on autopilot. It gets really hungry to just exercise itself. And so a lot of buying and selling that I probably shouldn't be doing and taking unnecessary risks. And that was, that was a, uh, really highlighted in the, in the trade log. 
Um, the next one was really a trust issue that came through on that trade log. And, and when you have trust issues, whether it's with your process, whether, with it's, whether, whether it's with your ability to um, execute your process, you know, your own decision-making or the tools or indicators, it leads to fear-based trading. Yeah. Um, and that, that can develop or, or raise its head in, in, in multiple different ways but I wasn't really uh, relying on my tools. I didn't trust my tools when I first started. And so I thought I knew better and um, wasn't, wasn't using those tools to shape perspective. I was using my own ability from trading for years prior, uh, not in the same day trading options arena, but in more stock trading arena. And I was using that same perception and going, ah, nah, this one's gonna go or no, this one isn't gonna go. So it worked both ways um, in that decision-making and through the remarks section of my trade log, bringing awareness and kind of calling it for what it is, bringing that awareness allowed me to then have a choice to decide to do something different. Okay, me thinking that I know what is actually going on and ignoring the tools, is not leading to an outcome that is desirable over time. So I can either continue to try and be right and, and be Superman, you know, have this, have this insight beyond what's actually being shown, or now that I have this awareness, I can choose to change my behavior in a more helpful manner, which then in turn goes back to what I was talking about before, commanding your trading process. And now that I have the trust, the tools myself and my decision-making ability, I'm in even more command of my trading process, which then over time has just been bringing more success um, with that. And so both those one kind of hard and fast by the statistics and one through the remarks section and actually doing the reflection aspect that is so important in a trade log. Um, what, what about you, Bruce, man? Well, what I, have you recognized? Anything in particular over the years? Well, listening to you speak just now, I, I, you, you think you're by yourself when you're out here and thank God for the coaching, because that's what comes to mind. I've had all the same issues. I've found all the same things. And, and what I become aware of with the trade log is sometimes you don't know what you're doing, but as you log these things and look back over time, you see them as they stand out, the mistakes stand out, your inconsistencies stand out. And, uh, uh, like uh, as I just heard, just I've had the same exact same issues, the same uh, looked at it the same way, and uh, uh, but the logging and and it's been a very it's been an eye opener the last few weeks how important that is to log every trade every day that you make the trades. I I got sloppy, I got lax, and. Uh, I paid an awful price to, to, to learn that, uh, to learn that mistake. Um, uh, but yeah, it's, uh... well, just, just jumping on that, Bruce, like it's, it's not just the losses and the ones where we make mistakes that are important to log and detect, you know, what went wrong, but as you were, you know, putting it, putting it together from what you were saying, the gains, the, one, the trades where we gain, um, or at least, you know, you come out ahead in the dollars and cents department, those are the ones that tend to get swept under the rug. And the nasty little habits that you might have just gotten lucky and you gained on that trade despite a crap process, those are the ones that are actually the poison pill in your trading process. Um, and they're the easiest ones to neglect in the trade log. So you, you're not alone, brother. I've been... Pfft, Shoot, I've been through that, that, uh, you know, that struggle myself. Um, the, here's, here's my antidote to that. And if anybody's out there and if you're, you're wanting to get a trade log going, basically to, to keep your trading system organized and, um, you know, get better than you were before. It's, it's a really simple tool, but high powered. Um, I don't consider any of my trades in the past until I've completed that line on my trade log. That is it, whether it was a gain or a loss. Um, and it's actually cur uh, curbed uh, another bad habit I talked to you about uh, on Thursday there, Bruce. There would be times where I'd be like in an Amazon trade and I'd see like Netflix taken off and I'd, 
I go over that. I'm going to get into Netflix too. I'm going to ride two calls at once, man. In the training that all three of us went through, Jess, man. Yeah. I see you smiling like that ain't, that ain't part of the process. You focus 100% on one trade at a time. So doing that and just making it non-negotiable, i.e. block out all the charts. As soon as I get closed on, on my trade, block out all the charts, turn to my trade log, process it. Another habit uh, that I discovered was helpful, get my ass out of this seat, do a lap, get some sun on my body, whatever I need to do, and then come back when I'm ready to trade again with a fresh uh, mindset. But but doing that has, has helped me um, n- slow down, Bruce, and to log every single trade, whether it was a gain or a loss. And I think, Jess, I don't know if you've ever struggled with that. That you know, you were talking about getting sucked into the into the screen. A lot of that is because we feel this pressure, and we need to speed up, and we need to get trades. Uh, lending itself to your fear-based mentality, that fear can manifest as you know fear that there will never be another opportunity. Right? We convince ourselves of this crazy notion. But how many more trades are coming, Bruce? Lots, millions, <laughs> and you're millions. not going to catch every one of those either. <laughs> so, and, and then there's FOMO, Jess, like you want to, uh, that's something we talked about on Thursday night. Some of the guys were talking about FOMO. I think Chris said it. Um, FOMO is one of his bad habits that he's been working on. So has that ever factored into your trading process, Jess? Yeah, FOMO's, FOMO's been a part of it, especially early on. Uh, that, that's one of the ones that really kind of jumped out and I had awareness of. And really what's helped the best with that for me is going, okay, uh, like, like for instance, uh, Microsoft had a little bit of a run this morning and I was, I was overlooking at something else um, and, and missed, missed Microsoft. And I was like, oh man, if this thing continues on this little Y point right here, I'm in this bad boy. I mean, look at this thing run. That, that thought always, I, maybe I shouldn't say always, but often still enters my head. Getting rid of FOMO is, or, or greed or any of these other things and having it be obsolete from ever entering into the brain space. Um, well, it'd be impressive if somebody could actually prove to me that, that that's possible to just completely remove it for good forever. And so the, the moment that I have that um, thought or, or I say that to myself in my head is the moment that I go right back to process. And that, that came through awareness is anytime that I have greed, fear, FOMO comments in my head, and it takes time to develop the awareness to actually listen to what you're telling yourself and analyze what you're telling yourself. Don't accept it to be as true or as fact. Being able to do that and then actually having a process that I know works, I go, oh, nope. Microsoft's already reached a limit that I wouldn't trade it anyways, because based on my process, this isn't what I'm going to do. And so then I move on. First starting out, didn't have that mechanism to actually, you know, put the uh, put the stoplight on that on that process. So FOMO is still there. But for me, the antidote for FOMO is really trusting my process and being really confident in what I'm doing. And the only reason why I have that ability to do that is because of the trade log. Because I've logged all those trades and saying, you know what, if I just do X, Y, and Z, then this is my outcome over time. And this is going to get me to where I want to go. So why would I chase and try and catch up to Microsoft and, and, and put myself in a higher risk? So the trade log and then building confidence in my process, that's, that's been my antidote to FOMO for me anyways. Well, and the, the, the common thread, no matter what emotion is hijacking my trading or attempting to at least, the common thread is I think it's gonna, I get into this predictive mode where I'm just, I am so convinced that it's gonna happen. But then there's also when you exercise discipline and you don't follow those, there, there's, you know, trade logging, uh, unfortunately it takes this negative tune to it. And a lot of times we beat ourselves up for the mistakes we made, but you got to also give yourself a pat on the back. If Bruce, if a day goes by and all you did was put little markers on your charts and you never actually traded one of those 
And that was within your process because none of them actually met your rules. If that day goes by and you don't actually execute a trade, can you hang your hat on that and say, hey, that was a big accomplishment today for me to stay out of risky trades? Absolutely. And over time, that's been my biggest successes is being able to watch them go by when they don't fit the rules. Uh, and again, I just want to mention on FOMO, it doesn't work out very often. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned that the hard way, even before the log, you, you, you look at the success rate and, and uh, grabbing that nice shiny moment doesn't work out that not, it's not consistent. <laughs> yeah, we, we also talked the other night with the, uh, with the club about getting into trends too early or too late. Um, and that FOMO, like you were talking about with Microsoft there, Jess, like it's generally, I think uh, getting in too late. too late, Um, but it can also, I've sometimes I've jumped the gun. Like um, Tesla was on a, a giant bull run this morning <clears throat> and I was pretty proud of myself because I stayed the hell out of that. Uh, it didn't have a clean entry point for me. Uh, by the time it had gone up to a resistance, it was uh, just a little bit too long in the tooth. So I stayed out of that. And I feel really, really good about that because um, there's a million more trades coming or a billion, as you say, Bruce, um, <laughs> we're not even going to catch those ones. Um, expectation management is something, Jess, you, you would talk uh, uh what we've talked a million times about um so guys out there you know just just maybe this one's a little bit higher up there but a lot of these loops are fueled by the fact that your expectations are out of alignment with reality so as you were saying bruce uh if you chase a trade on fomo uh there's a high it's a high risk proposition and you got in because your dog brain was expecting to get to get you paid to earn you a couple bucks on that trade, but that's not what the indicators and, and your charts, the precision tools you have to measure the risk on the, that, that trade entry, that's not what it was telling you. So just how do you use those tools to have realistic expectations rather than you know the irrational expectations of our, our dog brains? Through interacting with them and, and logging them and, and really keeping that awareness that's why it's so important to get in the replay simulator. When we're in the live market, we have a tendency to, if we're not trained, we have a tendency to be looking at dollars and cents or um, did I do this or did I do that? Whereas if we are sitting back and we're letting say a replay simulator go by, or if you have the discipline, the live market to go by, and actually just focusing on the tools themselves and making the connections uh, of, of what you're seeing and then putting that into practice, whether it's uh, uh, the control click method or, you know, with, with Trader Genius software, where it allows us to put a little, uh, um, little bubble there where we would entry, enter and where we would exit and actually logging that and seeing what the outcome is that. Because what we perceive changes based on different factors, whether we're feeling good that day, feeling bad that day, liking what we're doing, or feeling like we're having to get in there, like, oh my gosh, I don't wanna spend another hour of not trading, just watching the market go by. Mm -hmm. That's gonna change our perception. But as long as we're logging our actual actions of saying, hey, I'm seeing this when it's together, it looks like a good entry, click buy, it simulated buy. Um, and then when this, is meeting the requirements, I'm gonna click sell. If you log that stuff, then it takes your perception and your feelings out of all of it. And you can say, hey, here's the, here's the data. The data is saying that as long as I follow these tools and indicators in a certain manner, it's gonna end up having this certain type of result. So then from that process, you can start teasing out expectations. For example, uh, today, there was a trade that met my rules. It ended up being a weak trade. Years ago, I would have said, oh, no, man, this is its moment. I know it's its moment. Just got to give it a little bit more time to develop. And psh, it's going to shoot right to the resistance line that, I am, that I'm planning for it. It's going to do what I think it's going to do, what I want it's going to do, what my brain has said that it's going to do. That would be the old way. The way of trusting your tools and your indicators is going, hey, you know what? This is really turning out to be a pretty weak trade. It seems a little stuck right here. I've got 
it doesn't even matter if I have a profit or loss, but I've got, in this case, I had a little bit of profit, nothing to really speak of, but a little bit. And I said, you know what? It's just time to go. And as soon as I clicked that sell button, I went, hmm. And I reanalyzed and I said, no, yeah, time to go. Sure enough, that next candle, it dropped. I probably would have been at probably minus 10, 12% um, on that. So it, being able to trust those tools and actually lean on them for what they are, because they're going to be way more consistent than, than you or, or, or I. Uh, they're, they're just looking at the data and presenting the same thing the same way every time. And so being able to just offload some of that, it should be a relief actually uh, over time. It was for me to go, oh man, I don't even have to worry about that of what I perceive or expect or think. I just, I just do what the indicators tell me to do. And that allows for, for some good expectation management. And, and that the trap that we can put a name to in that, that we've talked about before, Jess, is predetermining the outcome. Like there's, there's all that information that got you into that trade and you might've had a, you know, reasonable probability in mind that it was going to go hit that ceiling, that resistance point, but you didn't predetermine the outcome and, and get fixated on it, right? That's what the dog brain wants to do. But if you're in that cognitive brain, guys, you can manage your expectations more realistically. Um, mindset work is one of the number one things that we do here uh, in Trader Genius um, you know, between the coaching and, and just what we all have discovered throughout our own journeys as, as traders. Um, we're all kind of, kind of compatriots and companions on our own paths towards trading effectiveness. Um, and just that paradox, Jess, you know, we're, we'll start wrapping this up, but uh, the paradox of the focus being on the dollars and cents that we earn from every trade is actually kind of like a red herring. It's, it's, it's misleading you um, to think, it, you know, even professional gamblers, like professional poker players, you turn it on, it's all over what ESPN and Fox Sports and stuff. You turn that on, those guys, yeah, of course, the big thing that, that everybody wants to see is, oh, what size is their chip stack when they're playing poker against the rest of them? But when they're actually uh, truly assessing themselves and how they're doing at that table in that game, they're talking about, okay, well, how am I reading the other players on here? Am I thinking through the probabilities of each hand correctly? Well, that's what we do as traders is we need to keep an emphasis on process, guys. So um, if the dollars and cents, and Bruce, we talked about this Thursday, actually. Uh, what, what was the number one thing? After I close out a day trade, my impulse, my instinct, if I'm looping, where does my attention want to go immediately after I close out that position? Very interesting. To the money. Yeah, pull up a brokerage account. How much? How much did we make? And what is that? Is that anything more than just a dopamine hit? Now, it's it's a it's a measurement that's going to be inconsistent because, as Jess, you were saying, you know, we don't we don't have enough zeros in our bank account to be controlling Tesla or Nvidia or whatever stock and and their share price. So we're just along for the ride, knowing that we're a little fish, and we're just going to be along for the ride of that wave. Um, that, that plus some advanced tools, some really easy to use tools really help you, um, be consistent in your measurement and measure your process. So guys in that trade log, I would encourage you not just to stop short and say, I bought at this price. I exited at this price. Here was my gain or my loss. Don't just stop there. Do some introspection. Why'd you get in? Why'd you get out? What went right? What went wrong? What can you do better next time? And then, you know, we talked about this several months ago, Jess, man, uh, you know, using kind of a report card grade or some kind of scorecard to give yourself a process based um, kind of kind of, you know, evaluation um, on how you did that day, not just the dollars and cents, the byproduct, but the process. Um, so that could be an A plus and, and you can give yourself an A plus even if you had a no trade day. That's the point. Um, it doesn't have to be a trade in that day, but, you know, subjective evaluation, Jess, man, how does, how does that factor into your trade logging process? Really, it's everything. And, and it, one of the, the things that I've realized that it's done over time is allowed me to stay focused on what matters and the behaviors that got me there. So over time, as my trade log has evolved and went from just the statistics, just the data, right? Uh, percentage, 
ones and zeros. And then into that reflection process so I could improve down the road. But one of the things that I started doing maybe a year ago or something like that, which has proved to be really valuable in maintaining consistency is I am tying things together. So for instance, the, the trade this morning that ended up being a weak trade and I'm, I'm tying the behaviors and the things in my system that allowed me to recognize that weak trade and get out. Lots of times we build these systems that have these behaviors and over time we start to be, maybe we're doing really well and we start dropping these behaviors. We say, oh, I'm not gonna trade log anymore. And then we have to learn a lesson that, oh, trade logging is what got me here to begin with. So being able to put in the trade log, the things that I have already put in place years ago or a year ago uh, and tying that knot over and over and over and over. And so when I review my trade log and actually reflect on it, I can say, oh yeah, that's why I'm doing this. That's why I'm doing no caffeine. That's why I'm doing um, uh, whatever, whatever it is, whether it's the breathing or being able to say, hey, there was only one CT indicator on that trade. And I paid attention to that, just that one CT indicator instead of having more indicators there and going, helping me identify that it was a weak trade. So I went ahead and exited and didn't expect it to go any further. So being able to have that subjective part allows you to stay consistent and grounded in the behaviors and systems that you've already established, as well as allow you to move forward, or forward and continue to grow, get better and better one trade at a time, because that's what it's all about. There's no hurry in this game. Yeah. Excellent, brother. Um, well, you know, that, that pretty much caps it off, guys. Um, you know, we talked a lot about those loops. We, we talked about what loops are. Uh, we talked about a lot of the loops uh, and traps that we've fallen in, um, in, in negative behavioral loops, as well as the helpful ones. Um, so, you know, there, there's only one way to actually change or reinforce a negative or a positive uh, behavior respectively, and that's to become aware of it first. Uh, so the number one takeaway from the, the self-discovery uh, that we talked about on Thursday and that we've been uh, recapping today is you got to be on the lookout for it. So part of embracing the trade log, and Bruce, you tell me if this is the case for you, part of embracing the trade log is not just picking apart the and analyzing the trade. You know, a lot of us guys want to get uh, very analytical, but part of it is getting comfortable looking in the mirror and having an honest conversation with yourself and getting to know yourself a little bit. Cause you know, some, some of us, you know, I, I'll raise my hand on this one, bro. Um, it's not always comfortable to look under those rocks, Jess, man. And, and to actually, um, you know, be at one with yourself and identify positive and negative behaviors. Uh, but Bruce, like, through your, you know, years of, of logging and maybe, you know, getting away from logging, have you gotten more comfortable looking in the mirror and actually kind of, okay, acknowledging when things are going right and when they're going wrong? Oh, it's, it's not easy to look at your, your faults and your uh, downside of your character, but uh, it's, uh, it's, it's rewarding as you go through it. It's not easy, but you do, dis you do have a lot of self-discovery that pertains to this trading uh, and to life in general. Uh, uh, and it's, it's been very rewarding, but it has not been easy. Good, yeah, well, you know, a, a lot of times the, uh, the easy way out doesn't, doesn't get you anywhere. Um, the, the hard road is, is the one that gets you to the top of the mountain. Um, so, and, and just adding to that, the value of this community. Um, to everybody, you know, all of our, our fellow Diamond members who were at the reset training the other night, Good to see you guys. Hopefully you got a little bit more and this helps cement what we talked about. But for those of you who might not be in the club um, and Trader Genius is an ex exclusive club, um, there's, there's a huge value to having these discussions in a community aspect like, like we do every other Thursday night, guys. Um, because, you know, Bruce, I think you said this the other night, like it just helps you so much to, to know that you're not the only one 
Who's... Absolutely. Yes. That was a very big one for me. Yes. You're, you're alone. You're by yourself. You, you think you're the only one having these, these issues. Uh, uh, and with, if you don't talk to anybody that get, gets into the loop, uh, the negative loop. Uh, and it's been so refreshing many times speaking to many people in the group and yourselves to know that most of us are having, if not all of us, the same problems or the same uh, issues. Uh, so, yeah, it, it's, it's very, I guess, for lack of a better word, comforting to know that we're all in the same boat. <laughs> you know? you know? yeah. and, and we not only expose the landmines that we've all been stepping on figuratively, but we also share the knowledge of how to overcome them yes. and how to become effective traders one little trade and one step at a time on our individual journeys. Um, so I, I echo what you say, brother. It's, it, it not only delivers a little bit of comfort to know that you're not alone out there, but it actually, I think, um, sustains us as traders for the long haul because uh, you know, Jess, you, you've been trading for 20 plus years now. It's, it's, a, it's a solo sport in, in most uh, individual cases, uh, but we've done something different in Trader Genius. Um, and we've given ourselves that support network as well as kind of a repository of lessons learned uh, that can augment any individual's trade log. Um, yeah, I, I think the, the value that we've, we've learned from all of our experiences trading and, and why Trader Genius e exists is those opportunities to get better. And, and at the end of the day, if, if people are serious about getting better and they want to have more awareness, so they have more choice in their behavior and the direction that they head, man, get a trade log, reach out to us. We've got a trade log we can, we can hand over to you. Um, find a mentor and find a community. And the growth right there in those things that you can do outside of your, your trading time, uh, minus the trade log, do that right after each trade. But um, those other things will allow you to stay connected, grow awareness, and then have choice. Because if you don't have awareness into your behavior or your loops, then you actually don't have a choice to get better. Um, and so you're kind of, uh, what do I wanna say, you're reconciling yourself to repeat the same patterns over and over and over. And uh, as, as Bruce said, it's not easy, but the growth just in trading and in life, when you're actually doing that self-reflection and have those awarenesses and make the right choices, the, the, the growth is, uh, is probably one of the most special parts that I have received through my career as a trader is, is through that growth. Beautiful. Well, that's, uh, that's a great way to close it. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, you know, that, that kind of in closing, um, but that's what Trader Genius is. If you've ever wondered what Trader Genius is, you know, you see us talking on YouTube, uh, maybe you see us on Facebook or Instagram or something, uh, or you've checked out our website, tradergenius.com. Um, it's not a company, it's a club. And it's a bunch of people like us three getting together, trying to, you know, a rising tide raises all ships, Jess. That's the, the number one kind of uh, concept behind the club. And a lot of fantastic traders have gone before us and, you know, kind of paid it forward and given us their methodologies and, and program their, these tools that we use um, and come, in, come together and just made every one of our lives and trading careers just that much better just by being part of this community. Um, so uh, I'm thankful to the club's founders, uh, eternally grateful. And uh, they're, they're, you know, just a little sneak. Uh, they're, they're always working on new tools. Let's put it that way, Jess. Um, so they're, they're constantly in development, trying to make, uh, this badass software education and community, uh, one little bit better than it was the day before. Um, so take that and, uh, guys, if you're, if you're out there, you're trading without a plan and you're kind of haphazard, maybe FOMO's got you, you're inconsistent up one day down the next, um, and you're not logging. Well, there, there are simple fixes, uh, to get you on track. And uh, we'd love, love to talk to you about it because we love to geek out with other traders um, and have, uh, <laughs> have long winding conversations just like this. Um, so appreciate you guys. Um, this, is, this was talking about self-discovery. We'll see you again in about two weeks for another recap. You guys take care.